Setting the white balance can make the difference from your white walls or white curtains actually looking white to them actually looking very orange. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use a gray card and even one without. If you don't have one, don't worry. We'll go through the settings for that as well so that you can get more accurate colors and your camera less dive right in. So a lot of people wonder what's the importance of white balance and honestly it's just trying to get accurate colors as best as possible. You can always change things in editing but it's best to do it in camera when possible and that's where these gray cards come in handy because we can use this to help set exposure or actually have the camera take a picture of this image, actually get the readings and all the data and all the nerdy things so that the whites actually look white, things that are actually of color look better and more accurate and true to life. You can always make these tweaks in editing, but we don't want to have to uh, if we don't need to. We just want to get things as accurate as possible, especially when you have like window lighting, maybe LED light panels or something. There are multiple light temperatures, and that's why you'll see that word Kelvins. So what Kelvins is, is how they measure light temperatures, and that's why you'll see like tungsten or, you know, the daylight temperature. Those are measured in Kelvins. We don't want to be on either extreme. We really just want it somewhere in the middle. A best practice that you can use, even if you're new, is depending on what LED light panel that you use, you can really set the temperature to be either or. I like to be like right in the middle, so 4,500 Kelvins. It's not on either extremes, just kind of right in the sweet spot. So I would say start at 4,500 to maybe 5,000. And for most people, you can get any kind of look that you want with colored LEDs or whatever that's still just going to give you accurate representation of the color. If you're on the Sony a6100, you can go to the menu number one, tab nine of 11, and that will show you where your white balance and all the other stuff we'll get into is at. If you're on the a6400 or the a6600, you're gonna still wanna to go to that first menu tab, but we're going to go to page 11 of 14. So let's dive into the camera. So we're using the a6100 for this example, and real quick, just so you know, the difference between ambient and the difference between it being white, sometimes the ambience, I think for me being a person of color, it just kind of gives that extra little bit of warmth that actually helps. And so I like to actually have this at ambience and you can really sit in front of the camera and play around with these settings and see what you prefer. But just looking at the way that it makes that, takes out that little bit of warmth, I think ambience kind of helps warm things up a little, whether you're using the gray card, have the camera running in auto or whatever. So I have ambience turned on. So that top menu, the white, this one's currently set uh, to automatic white balance or AWB. And what we want to do is if you have an LED light panel, maybe you don't have a gray card, we wanna go all the way down to the actual Kelvins and this will allow us to actually manually set the white balance. So when you hit the right arrow and you select the actual numbers, uh, then that'll either lock it in or you can go in and scroll up and down. Now 4,500 is what the LED light panel is. And that's pretty much going to give me a clear representation and a, a kind of accurate representation based on the lightings that I have, what the camera should use. And this is honestly it if you just want to set it manually. Check and see, is your light bulbs a daylight temperature or more tungsten? And then you can scroll up and down and see, do you want it more warm or do you want it more cool the lower you make that number? and you can kind of adjust it. And that's a very easy way, whether you have a gray card or not, to set the white balance. Now, since I record in the same environment a ton, I like to already kind of know what my things are set at and just kind of like set it and forget it. So if you have a gray card, you can get these up for like $7 or something on Amazon, then this is super helpful because this the camera will do all the work. Quick tip here is that I'm sitting with the light is right here. I wanna make sure that it's not super shady because that can throw off the white balance, but I wanna make sure the light is reflective, not super dark, but where I'm gonna sit, and I'm gonna angle it just a little bit towards the light so that the camera can actually get a good accurate reading of what the light source is. And it's okay if you have a window behind you or in front of you, it'll do the same thing. So wherever you are, or if you're having somebody sit uh, in front of the camera, let them hold it and just make sure you can see the gray card really good. So you wanna go into one of the custom ones. I usually just use the last one. Um, and then when you go over and you click set, you'll see a little circle pop up and it's just gonna press the circle button on the back of the camera. It'll take a picture 
and that will let you know this is what we thought. It's saying that 5200 based on where the camera is sitting, where it's angled at and all of that. Uh, sometimes you can get a really crazy reading. It'll turn all the way green. And that may be the camera just saying it's either too dark or something is off and it didn't get a good reading, so nothing is set. So if you ever see a big lime green on the screen, that's okay, it's an error, just take another picture. And if you notice, if you take another picture, you can still get a different reading again because the way you shade it or the way you have it can adjust the way the camera reads it. So taking that picture a second time, it went from like 5200 to 4900. So if I prefer that look, then I can do that. One last pro tip is if you ever notice some kind of a hue, some kind of a tint, to a color that's in the white balance setting or that you're just noticing the camera is picking up and you do not want it there. I'm gonna show you real quick how to take that out. So when you go over into the white balance setting, you can still be in the custom or the Kelvin, it doesn't matter. Instead of clicking the center circle button here to select it, we wanna hit the right arrow and you'll see that this grid comes up with colors and the bottom right is kind of pink purplish and all the different colors. So if you're noticing maybe a slight greenish tint to it, as you saw, I moved it up and it's giving you some kind of a weird reading. We can actually bring this down or if you're noticing it's too magenta, too purple, we can just move it to the opposite side. So whatever it is, like if you're noticing it's too green, you can bring it down. If you're noticing that it's too pink purplish or whatever, you can kind of move it up and away from that color. And just small, small changes in this grid can make a huge difference when you're dealing with a specific color and you're just kind of wanting to pull that out. So white balance helps with that a ton, especially if you're in meetings or at a hotel and you're noticing even with the white balance set, it's still a little too orange. This is a great way to go into the camera and pull a specific color out or kind of pull that, start pulling that out of your image. So this is a super helpful tip when it comes to setting this uh, in your camera. And you can use this on cameras like the a6100, or even like the ZV-1. And if you're trying to decide between the two, I actually did a video talking just about that and which one might be better for video. So if that's something that you're into, you can click on the video on the screen. With that guys, a little bit of passion. I'll see you in the next one.